Hey there. Um, in this video for the review of Unit 5, we are going to take a look at problems 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Problem number 12. Suppose that f of x is differentiable everywhere. Now, if a function is differentiable, it means that it must be continuous. Um, now, we know that f of negative 2 is equal to negative 5. And f prime of x is less than or equal to 5 for all values of x. Using the mean value theorem, what is the largest possible value of f of x? OK, this one is a tricky one. One important thing here is that they mention the mean value theorem. Now, the mean value theorem says that the average rate of change has to be equal to the instantaneous rate of change. And the way we write that with formulas is the average rate of change is just the slope formula, but we're going to use functional notation, f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And instantaneous rate of change is f prime of some value c. So the average rate of change or the slope of the secant line is going to be equal to the slope of the, of the tangent line at least at one point x equals c, but it could be at more points. Now, if we think about what the x values that we have are, those values are negative 2 and 8. So the interval goes from negative 2 to 8. Now, that's my a and b. So I can write that f of 8 minus f of negative 2 over 8 minus negative 2 um, that should be less than or equal to 5 because they told me that the slope is always less than or equal to uh, 5. Now it turns out that I have some information here that I can actually replace. I don't know what f of 8 is that is actually what I'm trying to find. But I do know what f of negative 2 is. So f of 8 minus f of negative 2 is negative 5 over, and then 8 minus negative 2 is 10. That is less than or equal to 5. OK. I can multiply both sides by 10 to get rid of that 10 in the denominator on the left side. And then if I do that like this, then I'm going to have that f of 8 plus 5, because I have a minus negative 5, is less than or equal to 50. And then I can just subtract 5 from both sides. And I will have that f of 8 must be less than or equal to 45. So that is the maximum, the largest value of f of 8 in this context. It's an interesting problem. Number 13 says, for all x in the closed interval from 2 to 5, and we can see that all the, all the tables, all the options go from 2 to 5, so that's good. Um, the function f has a positive first derivative. Now, what does a positive first derivative mean? Um, so f prime is greater than 0 means increasing. And a negative second derivative. So f double prime is negative, which means concave down. OK, so let's see. Let's first check which of these are increasing or decreasing. Um, table A, we see that the function is increasing, right? As x increases, y increases. So this one's increasing. Then this next one is also increasing. Now, this one goes, the y values go from 16 to 7. So this one is decreasing. So that's not it. And then the last one is also decreasing. So that is not it. Now, when f increases faster, so this goes up by 2, then by 3, then by 4. And this one increases by 4, then by 3, and then by 2. So if f increases faster, 
that means that that will be concave up. Now, what does that mean? So, you know, like this would be concave up, and from one point to the next, the slope is increasing more and more and more. But if I have a graph that's concave down, then the slope is increasing, but it's not as fast. So the, or not the slope, the, the, um, the, the graph of F is increasing, um, but it's increasing slower. So increases in a slower way. So that means concave down. Okay, so option B would be the answer. Another thing you could do, but it's kind of tricky. Once you determine that there are only two that could be the right answer because there are only two that are increasing, and that's something we had to, um, that's something we knew because the first derivative was positive always. We could try to plot those points, you know, as, uh, you know, the best we can, but we don't have a grid, we don't have a scale. So we have to be really good at plotting on a white empty space. And then we should be able to see that curvature concave down or concave. But I think with the increasing faster or slower, that helps us. In, hopefully. And we're getting to the last problem on this page, problem 14. Problem 14 says that on the closed interval between 0 and 2 pi, the absolute minimum of f of x equals e to the sine x occurs at. So we want to find that absolute minimum. Now, very important here. When we talk about absolute minimum, oops, absolute minimum, we are talking about something called the candidates test. Now that means that yes, we're gonna find the critical point just like we did when we would find the derivative, set it to zero. But instead of putting numbers on the number line, we're going to evaluate those critical numbers into the function and also the endpoints. And then we're going to see which one is either the max or the min or the min. In this case, they're asking you to find the absolute minimum of all the candidates. So with max and min problems, we always start by finding the derivative. So f prime of x would be e to the something is e to that same power times, this is like a chain rule, the derivative of that exponent, which is cosine x. Now, we are going to set that equal to 0. So e to the sine x times cosine x equal to 0. And then we are going to see when this function, for which values of x, that function is equal to 0. That derivative is equal to 0. Now, e to the sine x um, an exponential function, you think about, you know, the graph of an exponential can be either like this or like that decreasing. Um, and that was not a good graph like that. It doesn't ever touch zero. It doesn't have a solution. So then the solutions are really going to be where cosine x equals zero. So this gives me no solution. But this one, now, where on the unit circle is cosine x equal to 0? Remember that cosine is the x-coordinate. And if I think about where it might be 0, well, these are the points where there are, there are zeros. And the only two places where cosine has a value of 0, so the x-coordinate on the unit circle is 0, are pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, so those would be our first two candidates x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2. And of course, we also have the endpoints. So x equals 0, x equals 2 pi. These are the end points. Okay, so I have four candidates I need to test. And I need to look at which one is the absolute minimum. OK. Let's take a look. So 
we're going to evaluate f, so this function, at 0, e to the sine 0. Sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to be e to the 0, which equals 1. Then we have f of pi over 2. I'm just going in order. e to the sine pi over 2. Sine pi over 2 is the y value up here. So that would be e to the 1, which is just e. Now, it helps to remember that e is about 2.7. This is a no-calculated problem, calculated problem, so we need to know that e is approximately 2.7. It has more decimals. Then we have f of what would be next, 3 pi over 2. And that's going to be e to the sine of 3 pi over 2. Now, sine 3 pi over 2 is the y value at 3 pi over 2, which is negative 1. So e to the negative 1 means the same thing as 1 over e. Now, if I divide 1 over 2.7, that's going to be less than less than 1. No, it's going to be uh, like 0.4, maybe, or something like that. So, so far, this, this one's winning as the minimum value. But we still need to check f of 2 pi, which is the other endpoint. e to the sine 2 pi. Well, sine 2 pi is a y value at 2 pi. And that would be 0. So e to the 0, once again, 1. So this here is the minimum. Now, what? where does it occur? Well, it occurs at 3 pi over 2, which is what we found. OK, and that would be the end of this video. We are getting close to the end. Hopefully, you are watching these and you are finding the news. OK, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like or subscribe. Bye.